Hey guys, this is Aman from Edureka and I welcome you all to this interesting session on triggers in Salesforce. But before we get started, I would like to address the agenda for today's session. We will start the session off by understanding what exactly is triggers in Salesforce. Then we'll learn about what are the different types of triggers and the events in Salesforce triggers. Moving on, we will understand the syntax to write a trigger in Salesforce and what are context variables in Salesforce triggers. Next, we'll take a look at the things to consider before implementing a Salesforce trigger. Finally, we will conclude the session with the demo part where I will show you how you can create a trigger in Salesforce. And guys, if you like our video, do not forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to never miss an update from the Edureka channel. Also, if you're looking for an online training certification in Salesforce, check out the link given in the description box below. Now moving on to our first topic, what are triggers in Salesforce? Triggers in Salesforce are known as Apex triggers. Apex triggers are a piece of code which enables you to perform custom action before or after the change of any Salesforce record. These changes could be anything like insertion of records or updation of records or deletion of records. You can use triggers to perform operation based on a specific condition. So only when the condition occurs, the triggers are executed or fired. Triggers could be used to modify records or restrict any certain operation from happening, like restricting addition of a field or deletion of a field. Now you can use triggers to do anything that you used to do in Apex, including executing SOQL and DML statements or calling custom Apex methods. Triggers can be defined for top level standard objects such as accounts or contacts and even for custom objects and some standard child objects. So if any changes occurs to these objects, you can set a trigger to perform a set of functionalities. Now another point you need to remember is triggers are active by default when created. Salesforce automatically fires the triggers when a specific database event occurs. So I guess you have understood something about Salesforce trigger. So now let us move on to the next topic, which is the types of Salesforce trigger. So basically there are two types of triggers in Salesforce. The first one is the before trigger and the second one is the after trigger. Now as the before trigger name suggests, they're used to perform a task before a record is inserted or updated or deleted. These triggers are usually used to update or validate record values before they are saved to the database. Next, after triggers are used to access field values that are already set by the system, such as a records ID or date or phone number field, and to affect changes in other records as well. These triggers are usually used to update or validate record values after they are saved to the database. Also, after triggers are read-only. You cannot make any changes to them. So these were the two types of triggers in Salesforce. So now let us move on to the next topic and understand what are the trigger events in Salesforce. Now, as we all know, triggers is a set of statement or a piece of code. So it can be executed on any of the following events. Here is the list of trigger events, which means now a trigger can be fired when the following event occurs. So before insertion means the trigger will be fired before the records inserted to the database. For example, let us say you're inserting a new lead. You can create a trigger which will be fired if the detail of the new lead is same as that of the previous one. This way you will avoid the duplication of record. So these are the following trigger events. The first one is before insert, next we have before update, and next we have before delete, after insert, after update, after delete, and after undelete. You can set a trigger before or after an event occurs. You can write a trigger and it will be executed before or after the DML event. DML is nothing but insertion, updation, and deletion. You can also add more than one trigger event, but they should be comma separated. Now let me explain this better with the next topic, which is syntax for Salesforce trigger. The syntax of a trigger definition is quite different from a class definition syntax. A trigger definition starts with the trigger keyword. It is then followed by the name of the trigger. You can name a trigger anything you want. Next is the Salesforce object that a trigger is associated with. This could be anything like leads or contacts or accounts or any other custom objects. Salesforce object is known as S object. Next is the trigger event, which we have talked about in the previous topic. You can fire a trigger in one or more events, but it should be comma separated. Next is the body of the code which will contain the condition under which it fires. So this was the syntax for writing a trigger in Salesforce. Now let us execute a small demo to understand this better. We will fire a simple trigger before we insert an account and write a message to the debug log. So let me just quickly switch to my developer console. So here I've signed in into my Salesforce developer console. So the first step is to click on file, go to new. We have an option here called Apex trigger. So we'll just click on that. Now we can name a trigger anything we want. We'll just name it demo. And the S object we're going to select here is account. So we'll click on submit. Now it's creating a new trigger. And you can see the syntax for a trigger. The trigger keyword, 
the name of a trigger on what s object and what trigger event by default it is before insert next we're just going to display a hello world here so for that system dot debug hello world semicolon we'll just save this next we have to go to a debug open execute anomalous window now here we're going to create a new account account a is equal to new account now we have to give a name to our account so we'll just name it test account next insert it so let us execute this now here is our execution log so just click on debug only or you can just scroll down and find debug over here here is the debug so here you can see our message hello world this was just a small code to explain the syntax for writing triggers in salesforce now i guess you have some idea about salesforce trigger syntax let us move on to next topic and understand what are context variable so all trigger define implicit variables that allows developer to access runtime context to explain this in simple terms context variables are special variables which are managed and created by salesforce itself which usually gives us the information about the trigger these context variables are required when we want a piece of code inside the trigger to run only for a particular event using this context variable we can specify which piece of code we want to run for which particular event avoiding running all the other pieces of code which are not required to run for a specific event another important point is all context variables are contained in the system.trigger class so now let us take a look at the list of context variables in salesforce trigger the first context variable is is insert this returns true value if the trigger was fired due to an insert operation for many salesforce user interface or apex or the apis I would like to show you the syntax here so you can know how exactly can we use context variable in a code. So you can see if trigger dot is insert is equal to is equal to true, only then the set of code will be executed. It basically is like it's checking for a condition and only if the condition is true, the set of code will be executed. Else it won't be executed. The next context variable is is update. This returns true if the trigger was fired due to an update operation. Next is the is delete. Now this returns a true value if the trigger was fired due to an delete operation after this we have is before this returns true if the trigger was fired before and record was saved to the database after this we have is executing this returns true if the current context for the apex code is a trigger and not a visual force page or a web service or an api call the next context variable is is after this returns true if the trigger was fired after all the records were saved to the database next is is undelete this returns true if the trigger was fired after a record was recovered from the recycle bin. Next, we have the new context variable. Now, this returns a list of new version of the Salesforce object records. The Salesforce object records is only available in insert, update, and undelete triggers, and the records can only be modified in before triggers. After that, we have new map. New map is a map of IDs to the new version of the Salesforce object records. This map is only available in before update, after insert, after update and after undelete triggers after this we have old old returns a list of old version of the salesforce object records this salesforce object list is only available in update and delete triggers after this we have old map old map is a map of ids to the old version of the salesforce object records this map is only available in update and delete triggers and finally we have the size context variable this returns the total number of records in a trigger invocation this would include both old and new so these were the context variable in salesforce now let us move on to the next topic and take a look at the things to consider before implementing a salesforce trigger the first point is absurd trigger the absurd triggers can fire both before and after insert or before and after update trigger as appropriate next we have the merge trigger which can fire both before and after delete for the deleted records and both before and after update for the updating records the third thing you need to consider before writing a trigger is a trigger cannot have a static keyword in its code. Next, triggers that execute after a record has been undeleted only works for specific objects and not for all the objects. The next thing you need to keep in mind is the field history is only updated after the trigger has successfully finished processing the data. Also, any callout should be asynchronous so that triggers does not have to wait for the response. And the last point is if a trigger completes successfully, the changes are committed to the database. And if it fails, all the transaction is rolled back, which means it becomes the same as it was before. So these were some of the things you need to consider before writing a trigger in Apex. Now, before we move to our next topic, I would like to say that triggers can be very helpful. It can help you avoid costly data related mistakes inside of Salesforce 
while streamlining and automating actions that otherwise would have had to be performed manually. Also, Apex triggers help you manage how specific types of data are handled internally, which will help you execute a broader overall data maintenance and management strategy. Apex triggers help you manage how specific types of data are handled internally, which helps you execute a broader overall data management and maintenance strategy. With Apex triggers, you can also effectively identify and fix common database issues, such as merging duplicate accounts, standardizing job titles, and formatting address and phone number fields consistently. So with this said, let us move on to the next topic, which is the demo part, where I will show you how you can create an Apex trigger. So in this demo, we are going to create a trigger so that when someone creates an account, the trigger will check if the account name already exists. If it does, it will throw an error message saying the account name already exists. So for this, let us go to our Salesforce account, developer.salesforce.com. So if you're going to the website for the first time, here you'll have two options, login and sign in. If you're a new user, you can just create an account. It'll just take maybe one or two minutes to create an account. After you've logged in, you can just go to your name over here and go to my developer account. Select your username. So if you're new to Salesforce, this is what a Salesforce console would look like. Now to go to the developer console, just click on the setting over here and select developer console. Now go to file, new, Apex trigger. We can name our trigger anything we want. We'll just name it account duplication. And on what Salesforce object we're going to do this? It's on account. And we'll click on submit. So here we have the trigger keyword, the name of a trigger, and an account object. And here we have the trigger event. Next for a body of a code, we're going to create a for loop first. For account object, we're going to create an instance for account. Trigger dot new. Next list account. Next creating another instance list account my new is equal to now here we need to select an ID which will compare the new account name with the existing account name. So for that, let's go to select ID, comma, name from account where name is equal to account name. This statement will get us the account name. Now in order to compare and throw an error message, we need to check for a condition. For that, if my new dot size, here we're using the size context variable, which will return the total number of records in a trigger invocation. So if it is greater than zero, it will throw us an error message. Account dot name dot add error account with same name already existing. We're just going to save this. So it's saved. Now let us go to our account section. Now here you can see I have five account records and these are my account names. So now let me try creating a new account with the same name. So I'll click on new and the account name I'll give it as test account. So now none of the other fields are mandatory. So I'll just click on save. So here you can see we are getting an error message saying account with the same name already existing. And you can see how simple it is to create a trigger in Salesforce. And with this, we have come to the end of the session. I hope it was helpful. Do leave your valuable comments in the comment section below. Happy learning. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!